Hello, my name is uh, Jones, and uh, today we are going to look at um, the anatomy of the female reproductive uh, system. Okay, so we are looking at the subject of integrated reproductive health, and uh, in our first lesson, we defined what uh, IRH is all about, okay, and the components of IRH. Apart from that, we looked at the definition of uh, terms and we also looked at abbreviations uh, that are used in IRH. So it's important before you come to this lesson that you would have watched those things. Okay, so the anatomy of female reproductive system. The female reproductive system comprises of the external genital organs and the internal genital organs. Okay, so it is important for the student uh, to understand the anatomy of the female reproductive system so as to understand obstetric and obstetric nursing. So the anatomy of the female reproductive system here has the side of view, okay, of the female reproductive system. It has also the posterior view and it has the inferior view. Okay, so among these, uh, it's also important to note uh, within your program which ones uh, you can be asked uh, to draw, okay, in terms of uh, preparation for the exam. But um, it is important that uh, you appreciate uh, this anatomical view of the female reproductive system from all these uh, angles. And uh, when uh, Writing the diagram, it's important uh, that you have the title of the diagram, uh, you have uh, the labels uh, as uh, they have been shown without showing arrows. Uh, because in science, when you're showing arrows, is something going in or something going out, depending on the, the position of the arrow, the way it has been. So uh, these uh, views uh, that we have tried to show the anatomy of the female reproductive system are important to make you understand the structures that are associated uh, with the birth canal so you understand their position so that you can understand that these uh, diseases that can be found in integrated uh, reproductive health okay so when you talk of external genital organs we have uh, the external organs of the female reproductive system we have uh, the moons are pubis the labia majola the labia minora and the clitoris. So these are the external, external outside. Right? So these are the external organs of the female reproductive system. Then um, other things uh, that are within the external include the frenulum, a vestibule, and the perineum. Okay, so these are the form of the external genital organs. Okay, so moon pubis, labia majola, labia minora, clitoris frenulum, uh, vestibule, and uh, perineum. Okay, so other things also that uh, you also need to uh, understand or appreciate uh, on the external genital organs are uh, the Bartholin's glands, uh, the prepuce, and the foreshade. Okay, so uh, this diagram uh, necessarily tries to put across uh, these uh, external uh, genital organs uh, that I've just uh, mentioned. Okay, so the location of the vestibule, the clitoris, the moons are pubis, labia majola, the, the prepuce of uh, clitoris, uh, labia minora, urethral orifice, uh, the hymen, okay, the perineum, the anus, and the vaginal orifice. So these are the external uh, organs uh, of the reproductive system. So as a group, uh, these structures uh, that surround the openings of the urethral and vaginal are called the vulva or uh, uh, pudendum and is derived from the Latin word meaning covering. So vulva, so as a group, these external organs are called vulva or pudendum. Okay, so Moon's pubis, um, this is the fatty rounded area overlying uh, the senses of pubis and covered with thick coarse hair. Okay, so thick coarse hair, I'm talking of an adult here. Okay, then rabia, majora, 
the radial majora run a posteriorly from the monza pubis. They are the two elongated hair, hair covered the skin folds. They enclose and protect other external reproductive organs. Rabia minora, uh, these are two uh, smaller folds that are enclosed by the labia majora. They protect uh, the opening of the vagina and the urethra. Anteriorly, the rabia minora form the prepuce and the frenulum of the clitoris. Posteriorly, the labia minora brings uh, with uh, the labia majora and the perineum to form the foreshape. Vestibule, the vestibule consists of the clitoris, urethral, meatus, and uh, the vaginal introitus. The clitoris is the short erectile organ at the top of the vaginal vestibule whose uh, function is a uh, sexual excitation. The urethra meatus uh, is the mouth or opening of the urethra. The urethra is a small tubular structure that uh, drains urine from the bladder. The vaginal introitus uh, is the vaginal entrance. Okay, so internal genital organs, they are the uterus, uh, the ovaries, okay, the paropian tube, okay, so that diagram just tries to portray the inside. We've talked about the external organs, okay, so the vulva, okay, talking about the group of external organs. So now internal genital organs, we have the uterus, the ovary, the fallopian tubes there. Okay, so this diagram is, uh, uh, this diagram is uh, there to make you appreciate uh, the, the internal organs, okay, that are uh, can be there within the reproductive system, okay, and also it shows uh, the layers of muscles, okay, uh, of uh, the uterus, okay, so we have um, outside in the perimeter, we have the perimetrium and the knee, uh, at the middle, we have the muscle myometrium and then inside there we have the endometrium. Okay, so the fetus has got a neck there, so where we find the cervix, okay, and then um, the fallopian tubes. Okay, so here's uh, another flat view that uh, tries uh, to show the uterus, uh, the ovary, okay, uh, fallopian tubes, okay, and the uterine wall. Okay, so this is um, just uh, for us to appreciate these internal organs. The internal organs of the female consist of the uterus, uh, uterus, uh, vagina, fallopian tubes, and the ovaries. So uterus, uh, the uterus is a hollow organ about the size and shape of a pear. It serves uh, two important uh, functions. It is the organ of menstruation, and uh, during pregnancy, it receives the fertilized ovum, retains and nourishes it, until it exhales the fetus uh, during labor. So that is the face function. Then the location, the uterus is uh, located between the urinary bladder and uh, the rectum. It is uh, suspended in the pelvis uh, by broader uh, ligaments. Okay, so we have uh, two divisions of the uterus. The uterus consists of the body or corpus, fundus, uh, cervix, and the isthmus. The major portion of the uterus is called the body or corpus. The fundus is the superior rounded region uh, above the entrance of the fallopian uh, tubes. The cervix is the narrow inferior outlet uh, that uh, protrudes into the vagina. It is about three to five centimeters in diameter and uh, about one to three centimeters in length. The isthmus is uh, the slightly constricted portion that uh, joins the corpus uh, to the fallopian uh, tube. Three walls of the uterus, uh, the walls are, are thick and are composed of three layers, that is the endometrium in the inside, then the myometrium in between, and uh, then the perimetrium. 
Okay, so the endometrium is the inner layer or mucosa. A fertilized egg uh, burrows into the endometrium, okay, this we call implantation, and resides there for the rest of its uh, development. When the female is not uh, pregnant, uh, the endometrium lining sloughs off about every 28 days in response to changes in levels of hormones in the blood. This process is uh, what we call menses okay, or menstruation. So the myometrium is the smooth muscle component of the wall of the uterus. So these are smooth muscle fibers are arranged in uh, longitudinal, secular, and spiral patterns and are interlaced with connective tissues. During the monthly female cycles and uh, during pregnancy, uh, these layers undergo extensive uh, changes. The perimetrium is a strong serous membrane that coats the entire uterine corpus except the lower one and the anterior surface where the bladder is attached. The adult uterus is about 7.5 centimeters in length and 5 centimeters wide and its thickest part that is about 2.5 centimeters in diameter. Before the onset of menstruation, its length ranges from 2 centimeters to 5 centimeters. The weight may vary from um, 50 grams to 80 grams. The non pregnant uterus can hold only about 5 mils of fluid. Okay, so you know when you see your menstruations, that is almost the amount of mils that may come. So the endometrium during pregnancy is called a, a decidua. The muscles of the uterus have a great capacity to increase both in number and in size. Okay, that is of up to five, 500 times its normal size during a uh, pregnancy. It increases uh, gradually in size uh, from the first trimester through the second trimester and up to the end of the third trimester. It then uh, contracts and expels the fetus at the time of labor and the childbirth. Vagina. The location is uh, that the vagina is in the uh, is uh, the thin water muscular tube, long leading from the uterus uh, to the external genitalia. It is located uh, between the bladder and the lectum. It is uh, made up of um, fibromuscular layer and it is lined with uh, mucous membranes and covered by striated uh, squamous epithelium which is arranged in rugae. Uh, the posterior wall is about 8 uh, to 10 centimeters in length and the anterior wall is about uh, 6 centimeters in length. The upper part of the vagina is uh, referred to as the vault. Okay, second uh, function here, the vagina provides the passage for childbirth and menstrual flow. It receives the penis and uh, semen during uh, sexual intercourse. Fallopian uh, tubes. Location each tube is about 10 to 12 centimeters long and extends immediately from each ovary to empty into the superior region of the uterus. The function, the fallopian tube transports ovum from the ovaries to the uterus. There is no contact of fallopian tubes with the ovaries. Description. Fallopian tubes are also called the oviducts. They extend out from the uterus like arms, reaching for the ovaries, which are positioned near them. Each tube has uh, two openings. One opening connects uh, to the uterus. 
The other opening is larger and wider and has a number of finger-like projections all around it called the fimbre. The fimbre lie, fimbre fingers, fimbre lie near the ovary of the same side and pick up the ovum at the time it is released from the ovary and uh, this process we call ovulation. This process we call ovulation. Microscopic hairs are called the cilia line the inner side the inner side of the tube and help in propelling the ovum towards the uterus. Each uh, tube is uh, about 10 to 12 centimeters long. Okay, then the width varies at different parts along the length, uh, being more towards the ovarian uh, side and uh, thinner but more muscular towards uh, the uterine side. So inside the fallopian tubes, we have the cilia, and then uh, near the ovary, we have the fimbria fingers okay so finger like things so that pick the over so it is widest part that is the ampulla varies uh, next uh, to the uh, it's uh, widest part uh, the ampulla lies uh, next uh, to the fimbria and uh, its uh, importance uh, and its importance lies in the fact that uh, fertilization of the ovum by the sperm usually occurs uh, in this region. Okay, that is in the antula. Okay, so it is uh, found near the fimbria. Okay, the fimbria is the one that collects the egg. Okay, and uh, lies in the fact that the, its importance is that fertilization mostly happens in the antula. Okay, so the widest part and the ampulla lies next to the fimbria. So the isthmus uh, is the portion of the fallopian tube uh, just after the ampulla, and uh, it uh, then it then uh, followed by the interstitial area. The point at which the fallopian tube enters the uterus is uh, called the cone of the uterus. Ovaries. The two ovaries are situated on either side of the uterus. They are the female sex gonads and are responsible for the release of a mature ovum every month of ovulation. They are also the chief producers of the female sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. The ovaries are pinkish white in color and roughly oval in shape, being 3 cm in length, 2 cm in breadth, and 1 cm in width approximately. Each ovary has an outer thick lining called the cortex and an inner part called the medulla. During the reproductive life, that is uh, from puberty to menopause. The cortex contains uh, numerous uh, uh, graphian follicles at different uh, stages of uh, development. Every month, a graphian follicle in uh, one of the ovaries matures, okay, matures and uh, releases. Okay, so. Every month, a graphene follicle in one of the ovaries matures and releases an ovum. This uh, phenomenon is called ovulation. During a woman's lifetime, only about uh, 400 follicles reach uh, maturity. So a woman attains a menopause when the number of follicles in her ovary decreases uh, below a critical level. The ovaries uh, shrink in size and become whitish in color. They also secrete a lesser amount of estrogen and uh, progesterone. So in summary, we have been uh, looking at, um, we, we have been looking at uh, the female reproductive uh, system and uh, we have um, expanded 
some of uh, the functions of the female reproductive system. We have looked at the structure of a female reproductive system. Okay, we have looked at the external, um, external parts of the female reproductive system. Okay, and uh, we've mentioned uh, the parts that are found within the external part of the female reproductive system. Okay, so we have mentioned those and uh, we have also shown the diagrammatic representation of um, uh, the external, external, external organs of the female reproductive system. Then um, we have also added some details about uh, these uh, parts of the female reproductive system. Okay, so these are some of the things. Then we discuss the internal genital organs. Okay, and uh, we have uh, some diagram illustrations of uh, the location of these organs. Okay, so it's important we know um, like uh, the detail apart from the just location, so the detail about each and every part of the organ. So we try to amplify that within the lesson. Okay, so Alopian tube, and uh, we have mentioned some of the many points uh, as we are discussing the structure. So that is uh, the summary of it. So male reproductive organ in another series, uh, we are going to look at this one. Now, uh, yes, we are going to look at the male reproductive system and also, also show some diagrams so that we appreciate the parts that are important in the integrated the reproductive health uh, uh, system or uh, topic. So that is the lesson. So our next lesson uh, will be on uh, menstruation. So thank you very much uh, for your concentration uh, on this topic. So uh, keep on uh, studying as we will be coming back uh, to look at uh, menstruation uh, in the next uh, topic.